We are at the Chateau Montalena Winery. Now this winery is one of the two wineries that won the 1976 Paris competition, which put Napa on the map as a place that actually makes good wine. Now this particular winery was featured in the movie Bottle Shock, if you've ever watched that. And oh, and we got to get out of the way. Now, never forget, this is a working winery, as are all the wineries here in Napa. So you'll sometimes have trucks, forklifts, places going around and make sure you don't get hit by stuff. I'm trying. about uh, the thing about Chateau Montalena, uh, we came here before, we weren't really thrilled with the wine. We thought it was good, but it wasn't amazing. Now for some people this may be amazing, but this is one of those wineries that we're telling you, you need to come here because it's beautiful. They have a gorgeous lake down there, they have ducks, they have bridges, they have Asian style uh, architecture. It's really pretty. Right now, the lake is suffering from the drought, but they're saying it's going to be refilled by the winter. We were here before when it was filled, and it is gorgeous. Here they have a French chateau style with the stones. It's beautiful. It's got the ivy crawling up, and they've got a tasting room up there. And if you want to go taste, you can taste. But we definitely recommend come here, take a look at the setting, walk around the winery, enjoy the place. It's beautiful. And if you want to engage in a tasting, go ahead and do it. We just weren't impressed by the taste. We are on the grounds of the Visa Tui Winery. Now Visa Tui, at least since the 1980s, has been known for their physical plant, their grounds. It's really beautiful and people love to come here and picnic. They created a little deli inside which has all kinds of breads and charcuterie and desserts and little pre-made meals. It's a good place to come if you're in the mood for a picnic. You get your food there. In fact, they don't allow you to eat any food other than their food on the grounds of the winery. You walk around the winery, you see it looks like an old monastery. The grounds themselves, the, the greenery is great. There's this beautiful fountain back here. It's really kind of a nice thing to do. Their wines, however, are unimpressive. They're not the greatest wines you've ever had. Uh, there are much better wines. I don't know whether they'll let you drink 
other people's wines on their ground. My guess is they don't. So maybe you come here, you eat some of their food, but you go someplace else for your wine tasting. Just something to think about. The grounds of the Alpha Omega Winery are actually quite minimalist, but they're beautiful. It's one of the more modern looking places with the fountains up and, and it's just a beautiful place to sit and enjoy a glass of wine. The problem is it's very expensive and the last time we were here for about $75 for a tasting, they gave us maybe a half inch of wine in a glass. And so if that's the normal way that they serve things, which I assume it is, I don't think they shortchanged us in particular, then it's really kind of too expensive to come here for a tasting. But the grounds are beautiful. It's a great place to come and take a look. The winery itself is gorgeous. If you want to take a chance that you're going to spend 75 bucks and get a decent pouring of wine, then come on and do it. But if not, just come and take a look at the grounds and enjoy yourself. had to make some adaptations due yeah. to COVID and it's really changed the character of the place quite a bit. Um, it's still a fun place to come but you need to be prepared before you come. A lot of the wineries require reservations now before you can go do a tasting. Yeah. You can't just walk in and taste yeah. because it looks interesting. Uh, some of them you still can but a lot of them you need to make a reservation. And some of these reservations are booked up weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. For example, we wanted to do a tasting over at the Jarvis Winery. We heard mm -hmm. that it's a really impressive tour and yeah. the tasting's yeah. really good. So I called them up about three weeks ago to see about maybe getting a reservation to mm -hmm. go tasting. And they said, no, we're completely booked up for the first two weeks of October. There's yeah. no way we can fit you in. And so if you are coming to Napa, you need to plan in advance where you want to go wine tasting and you need to make reservations and some of the wineries especially some of those we've shown you don't require reservations mm -hmm. but others do for a tasting now i don't know that that's going to go on forever that may go on yeah. for a little while uh, castella de amoroso absolutely positively mm -hmm. if you don't have a reservation they're not going to let you in but our recommendation for castella de amoroso is it's not really worth a tasting if you are going to do it and you have a group Maybe you book a tasting for one person mm -hmm. and then you all go in and wander yeah. around the castle. Yeah. You know, because it is worth seeing, but it's not really it's worth going winery. to taste the wine. Good. It's a gorgeous winery. Yeah. The wines just aren't really that special. Sterling. Sterling was closed. Uh, the reason they're closed right now is their gondola was broken. Yeah. 
and so they're in the process of fixing the gondola. Now, without the gondola, it's certainly not worth visiting Sterling yeah. anyway, so, you know, that didn't piss me off. I was fine with that. Sterling is a winery that's definitely worth going to because it's beautiful. Once the gondola is working again, once they're open, you're probably going to have to pay something to ride the gondola yeah. up to the top of the mountain. But when you get up to the top, you can see all of Napa Valley from the northern part. Yeah. And it's a beautiful, beautiful view. It's a beautiful, just just the sight, the feeling of being there. But their wines are very mediocre and certainly not worth what you pay to taste. But on the other hand, again, if you have to pay uh, mm -hmm. for a tasting, maybe pay for a tasting for one person and then you all ride the gondola to the top. You may all have to pay for the gondola, but it's worth the ride on the gondola. I just, I would not go out of my way to taste their wines. I would go out of my way to see the view from the top of that mountain. So that's certainly some things we've thought about. We're at the Cuvaison Winery. Now, as you can see, it's not a gorgeous place to come. You don't come here to taste, to look at the beautiful winery and everything. They're in the process of building a new tasting room right now. And the new tasting room is going to be hopefully much nicer than the area is right now. However, Cuvaison does have some of the best Chardonnays in the area, and they're really reasonably priced. So this is a good place to come taste, but you don't come for the view, you come for the wine, you come for the tasting. Again, like many wineries, you got to reserve in advance to do your tastings here, but this is certainly worthwhile. Anyway, this is the place.